there's only so much space. You want to grow a lot of fruit trees. Why would I waste any of that space to plant a tree or a shrub that does not produce fruit that I can eat or sell or do whatever with? Well, I can say from experience, because we started off uh, as a, an organic monoculture apple orchard. So we bought a 4,000 tree orchard uh, some years ago, 30 years ago. And I did that. I had it where, hey, no space was wasted. You know, there's trees wall to wall, you know, border, fence to fence. And I went down that road thinking, well, you know, it's okay. It's just, it's apple trees and, you know, no space is wasted. But I like uh, Sepp Holzer's take on it. He says, if you don't want a pig to do the job, then you inherit the job of the pig. <laughs> and it applies for everything everything in your ecosystem. If you don't want a, a nitrogen fixing tree, no problem. Then you're going to inherit the job of improving the soil. Here's a question from Shelly, listening from Las Vegas. Shelly says, what is the best nitrogen producing tree or nitrogen fixing tree? The best one, Shelly, is the one that grows like a weed in your area. Um, there, there's no magic bullet one. Every, every region, every region in the world has some, one of them at least to start that can grow well. Look around, probably something that people are complaining about. Sometimes it's an invasive weed. And if you look into it, it is actually a nitrogen fixing because the soil is so degraded that only a plant that can actually absorb its own nitrogen can grow. The nitrogen fixing tree has roots. The roots have nodules, which is where these little packages of nitrogen essentially are hiding. And those nodules are formed thanks to the symbiotic bacteria in the soil that snatches the nitrogen out of the air and somehow, you know, sets up shop in the roots of the tree. So that's fantastic for the tree. The tree has nitrogen, that tree. How does my apple tree next door benefit? Does that nitrogen fixing tree have to die and then its roots will decompose and these little nodules will decompose? Does the tree have to die in order for my fruit tree to benefit? I wish there was more research looking at this. Uh, and I can understand from industry point of view why they don't want to look at it too much. Just because, hey, there's lots of money to be made in, in you know, cracking petroleum to get nitrogen out of it. Uh, while nature wants to do it for free, we need to examine, you know, how much is the exchange happening? What's the best way to get it to happen? How much of the nitrogen fixing tree do you have to prune off every year? Is there a time of year that is best to be pruning that nitrogen fixer to release that nitrogen? So that pruning aspect is, is really uh, a vital part of the whole scenario. So we're talking about roots. Yep. How, you know, wh where is pruning linked to it? When you prune off a branch of your nitrogen fixing tree, how does that affect those nodules in the roots? We now know that each branch has its root. We think, well, the roots, you know, the roots provide the tree. Yes, but each root, because if you can divide, here's one root, that one root is mostly connected to one branch. Imagine a continuous pipe. You see a root. It's like a pipe. Well, that pipe goes usually along the trunk on the side that that root is connected. And then it goes up. And somewhere on that same side, <clears throat> it actually goes and feeds a branch. So a root is connected to a branch. So if you prune off a branch or part of a branch, you will cause a, a decrease in the root mass on that side of the tree. So if you're pruning the nitrogen fixing tree, a percentage, now what percentage? I don't know. What percentage of that root causes a dieback? Certainly not all of it because the, the branch will regrow new shoots. So it has to have some reserve, but a part of it will um, be given back to the soil. Okay, we have a question here from Kathy from Onalaska, Washington. 
She says, hi, Susan and Stefan. Thank you for this great discussion. We have an orchard of about 30 mixed fruit trees. How many nitrogen pick fixing trees and shrubs would be helpful for that many fruit trees? How near does a nitrogen fixing tree or shrub need to be planted to benefit a fruit tree? Fantastic questions, Kathy. Thank you. Yep. Okay. So Kathy, if you've got 30 existing fruit trees, I consider planting the nitrogen fixers in a trio pattern. So I changed from what Bill Mollison had recommended where he said, put a nitrogen fixer and a fruit tree, a nitrogen fixer and a fruit tree. So do one, two, one, two, one, two. I'm concerned about the space used. So I did not do that. I thought maybe I can stretch it so that every fruit tree will have a nitrogen fixer at least on one side. So I use a trio pattern. So then I can put a fruit tree, a nitrogen fixer and another fruit tree. So for your 30, those would be your fruit. And I wouldn't, because there, it's an existing orchard, I wouldn't consider using nitrogen fixing trees because you probably don't have the space, but you can integrate shrubs. So as Susan had mentioned, uh, carragana could be one. You can use sea buckthorn or sea berry. That's an excellent one. Plus it produces fruit, edible fruit, which is fantastic. So you have your trios, you've got a fruit tree, a nitrogen fixing tree, and then another fruit tree. But then you were talking about using the opportunity to use the rest of the area around the trees for other plants, including nitrogen fixing plants. So they may be uh, perennials, they may be herbs. Can you talk to me about these trios? How would you embellish them with other plants? Each tree, and that's fruit tree or nitrogen fixing tree, should have one to six shrubs underneath it. But that's just trees and shrubs. That's two layers. Now you can add underneath that, you can add a third layer, which is your ground cover. You can use herbs. We use a lot of herbs. You could use all of the, and, and especially use as many of the onion family as you can get. So we're talking uh, chives, garlic chives, Egyptian onions, uh, wild garlic or ramps as they're called in the US. You can use uh, bunching onions. You can use perennial scallions. For each fruit tree, we aim to have 16 perennials per tree. So do the math, Kathy, if you have 30 fruit tree times 16, and if you're gonna add your nitrogen fixing shrubs, which will take up the space. So do the math, 45 times 16, whatever that is, that's a lot of plants. And that can all be flowers. If you want flowers, put flowers in.